Hello, I'm moving my little table. Okay, so video today, the British Empire. Okay, I gotta get all situated. Okay, so the British Empire, oh, I didn't realize I had zoomed in. Okay, so as you can see, the British Empire is huge, okay? Um, okay, by this time period, the 1800s, they have lost the Americas. Well, they've lost America, um, so just pretend like we're not there, but don't worry about that. Look at this for a second. They have pieces of six of the seven continents, and technically, they stuck a flag way down here at in Antarctica. So like, huh? so they're, it's a pretty impressive empire. That being said, real quick, just like differentiation here. Look at England, I'm zooming in a lot. Okay, so England is right here. Okay. This island right here that makes up England and Scotland is the island of Britain. Okay. Um, way back a long time ago, it was B-R-I-T-O-N, Breton. Um, but that being said, um, this is the island of Britain, okay? Whenever England took over Scotland in the medieval period, like forever ago, um, they automatically became an empire, okay? So they've been an empire forever. Um, England then went and took Ireland, and at that point, they called this right here, the greater Britain, because it's not just the island of Britain, it's Scotland too. So the parent country of the British Empire is England, all right? But the empire itself is going to be called the greater Britain, all right? That being said, I already mentioned that they took over um, Scotland and then Ireland way back forever in the medieval period. But they also have had Canada ever since forever. Um, we talked about the French and Indian War. And that was where the French were fighting the English for control, basically, of Canada. Um, obviously, France lost. Hope you remember that. But France lost. And that's why England is going to end up with all of Canada. Um, the, the French, if you remember, though, they did get to stay there. They did get to, like... If they, as long as they admit that they're British citizens, they did get to stay there. And like, that's why over here in this part, especially of um, 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 Canada, you have such a strong French presence still there today. Okay. Um, England also, as you notice, they have several um, like Caribbean areas. Let's zoom in. Vroom. They have several Caribbean. Check this out. Look at that. That's where a lot of your like pirate stories come from is all this right here. Okay, so they've had that ever since the period of exploration, which is like 15, 1600s. Um, do you remember the East Indies? The Dutch East Indies, because the Portuguese took this over here and then remember the Dutch took it. I hope you remember all this. This is like quick review. The English have come in and taken some of the biggest, like best parts of the Dutch East Indies. So now the British and the Dutch kind of share that area. Okay. We are going to, oh, and then they have some of the Middle East. We are going to be focusing, especially today, on um, India up here. And then we have um, Australia and New Zealand tomorrow the video will deal with Africa, all right? Um, I do want to point out another couple things real fast before I leave this map. I'm trying to go fast, y'all. Four minutes, that's not bad. Okay, look at, just just kind of look at the, the islands, okay? Any red that you see is a British island. It's part of the British, the British Empire, okay? So this is pretty impressive. Look at the Indian Ocean. Um, this right here is French. This right here is Dutch, but otherwise the English control almost the entirety of the Indian Ocean. It's impressive. I'm not saying it's right, but it's impressive. Um, look over here at a lot of the Oceania Islands over here. They own a ton of those. You also have some um, French and Spanish islands in here, but... 
as I talked about yesterday with the Spanish islands, they're now ours, American islands. We have like the Philippines and stuff now. So, oh, and then I want to point out this. Look at this right here. So this right here is China. We'll talk about especially this one, Hong Kong. Okie dokie. So the British Empire, let's sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. So the British Empire, pretty impressive. Okay. That being said, let's start with, I don't know what your notes are first. Oh, I had to include this map just because I think this is a crazy picture. Um, what you're looking at are the only places that have never been invaded by Britain. You should definitely like pause this because I'm not going to stay on this picture long. You should, you should definitely like pause this video and just check this out for a second. And you can see like what they haven't conquered. But look at all the blue. Huh. I shouldn't say conquered, invaded. So you should definitely pause and like analyze this, but um, it's definitely an interesting oh, picture. Okay, so we're getting to some political cartoons. Political cartoons are not always ha ha funny, okay? Um, sometimes they're just like, huh, true. Okay, it's that kind of cartoon. That being said, there we go. That being said, this should automatically make you think of white man's burden. Remember from a couple days ago or a couple hours ago, whatever, this should automatically make you think of white man's burden. We have England right here at the British Empire making his way up a mountain to civilization. Yes. And he's carrying with him the Zulu, that's South Africa, China, you have India, you have other Asian groups here. Hmm. And look what he's walking up. A mountain that's called brutality. A mountain that's called slavery and cruelty and cannibalism and ignorance. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have to tell you more. Your analyzation skills should tell you exactly what this is telling you. These are gonna be some of the means by which England drags a lot of these, um, I don't know, non-European peoples up to civilization. Guys, another little side note, understand a lot of these places were civilized. China was civilized. They don't have all the cool, like modern industrialization, but China is civilized. Um, the Zulu were a big deal, strong tribe in South Africa. They were civilized in their own way. So India was highly civilized, just not westernized okay so just understand this kind of follows the idea of white man's burden a little bit where it's like ugh, there's no nice way to say it y'all it's racist okay okay look so we're starting with australia i love the aborigine people so much I could teach the Aborigine for like weeks. They're so cool. This is Australia over here. You should know that. It's one of your seven continents. Okay. Um, originally, well, let me let me start with the Aborigine, not not England originally. Look, the Aborigine are the original native settlers to Australia. Okay. Um, the Aborigine were were fairly peaceful. Now, you know, I hope by now, every stereotype like that is not true. Every single um, Aborigine tribe was not 100% peaceful. Okay. But as a people group, they're more of a peaceful people group. They were more like farmers and gatherers, stuff like that. Um, they are civilized. They have a civilization. They have um, ranks and social statuses. They weren't modernized and industrialized with all the new inventions that have been created right and what's gonna what's gonna be i don't know kind of a two-edged sword i guess for the aborigine is they're fairly curious about the british when the british show up when the british show up they don't they don't go out with their like their spears ready to fight they go out kind of like 
who are you? What is, what is this? And they're like, oh, you know, like they're, they're interested. Um, that's going to help the Aborigine a little um, because they're not going to be slaughtered. Okay, guys, once again, please understand there are going to be times in this whole England, Australia story where Aborigine were just slaughtered. Okay. But the Aborigine are also going to be able to kind of mix their culture with British culture, which I think is really cool. It's kind of like a best of both worlds type thing. Um, although please understand, you have to know the British are going to put them underneath them social status wise. That shouldn't surprise you. Okay. Here's another picture of some of the Aborigine people. I just, they're just such a fun, cool people. And I love their art, by the way, not just this art, but I love their art. It's fun. Oh no. What? Oh, okay. I just thought there were more pictures of Australians. Just kidding. Okay, so what ends up happening with Australia? So we have the Aborigine living there to begin with, yeah? The um, the British, dang, I should have put this map in between. Sorry. Um, the British are going to show up in Australia. I mean, they're here. They know it's there, all right? So they're going to show up in Australia, um, and they kind of see the outback over here. And they're like, ugh, what a wasteland. Now, over here is good land, but they're like, oh, what a wasteland over there. So they're going to make Australia into a penal colony. Ha, ha, ha. That's hilarious. Penal. Okay. Penal means law code. Yes, be mature. Law code. Penal means law. Um, so think of like the root word of penalty. Penal. Okay. That means law. Um, a penal code is a law code. So... They're going to make Australia into a penal colony, which is basically a, a convict colony. Um, Georgia was too, the original colony of Georgia and the Americas. Um, basically, because England is so small, they're going to start sending all of their convicts to Australia. Okay. And they do their sentence on like, like a farming farm. They do work on a farm to like carry out their sentence. They're not just sitting in a prison in Australia. They're doing work. Um, I guess you could think of it like slavery, except they're paying their debt to society for a crime. So I guess it's not the same, but still. Um, here's 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 the, the kicker, though. If you're sent to Australia to work on one of the penal colonies, um, you don't get to go back to the greater British empire. If your sentence is 10 years, that's it. You come here, you do your 10 years on a farm and then you are free, but you can't leave Australia. So if your family's up here, sorry, you're here. So what's gonna happen is a whole lot of these guys who get freed, um, they're going to make nice Oh man, I should have put this in a different order. Anyway, they're gonna make nice or enemies, I don't know, with Aborigine, okay? Of course there's some enemies, but a lot of them will make friends with Aborigines. And the Aborigine will teach them and they'll work for Aborigine. Um, they will be able to eventually like buy land and live the rest of their life as a free man in Australia. Even though they were a convict, um, they're not anymore. They're now a free man in Australia. Um, again, don't think that it's total peace with the Aborigine, okay? It's going to be more peaceful than what we're going to talk about, but it's not total peace, all right? That being said, um, a whole lot of the British men are going to start mixing with Aboriginal women. Um, women aren't coming to Australia yet, okay? It's a it's a colony of convicts. They're not sending the the, the female convicts here. So the men, if they want to have a family or whatever, they're, they're having relationships and basically creating wives out of Aboriginal women. So there's a lot of mixing as well. Um, so that being said, Australia gets set up that way. Okay. New Zealand is an interesting situation because New Zealand is right here. Okay. The 
original Englishmen who showed up in New Zealand actually were like convict, like Australian escapees who ended up here. Um, they escaped from the colony because there wasn't like, like a lot of security here. If you're on w- working on one of these like um, penal colonies, there's no guard saying, stop it, right? Because if you leave, where are you going to go? Right. So if you get out of here and you find an Aboriginal dude, a lot of them are like, dude, there's land down this way. And so we know that the first people to show up in New Zealand are actually um, convict escapees, Australian escapees. Uh, Whenever they show up here, they are met by the natives of New Zealand. They're so cool. They're not like the Aborigine, though. Um, They're not fairly peaceful. They're not a curious people who wanted to know a little bit about British culture. They wanted the British gone. This is a native New Zealander. They are called Maori. I hear people all the time say Maori. What? No, Maori. Say it, Maori. Um, The Maori are much more warlike this really cool way of going to war and I will underneath here I will um, attach some like YouTube videos that I actually show in class when I teach this Um, because oddly enough the Maori you can see just looking at this gentleman they tattoo extensively okay Um, they also do something called popping their eyes I don't even know how you do that like I can go like this but my eyes don't pop out like that guys do Um, They pop their eyes to show like intimidation and they will stick out their tongues. Okay, think about culture. And can you imagine the very first like, like English European dude that shows up here and this Maori guy, this guy right here, gets on the, the, the beach and does this to him and he's like, ah, right? You know, because think about our culture. We're Western culture over here. We would laugh. You're probably laughing right now. To us, sticking your tongue out is like funny or catty or like childish. To them, when they stick their tongue out at you, it means this. That's what that means. So I can just imagine the first Europeans that show up there and they see the Maori like popping their eyes on ah, sticking their tongue out, right? And you know those Englishmen are laughing. They're like, what a moron, right? That's like a big deal insult. And then it was probably even weirder for the Englishmen because then the Maori guys, they would kind of like get in this line. I promise I will upload some of these videos. They would get in this line and they would do a dance. What? It's called the Hakka, uh, H-A-K-A, terrible at spelling out loud. But basically what they do is you can tell, like, I usually perform this for you guys in class. I'm not going to, but um, that would go viral in like two seconds and that's not going to happen. But as you can see here, like they kind of squat, right? And there's a whole lot of like slapping and like hitting yourself hitting your chest and you're popping your eyes, you're sticking your tongue out the whole time. And it's supposed to be intimidating. (laughs) Both of my dogs are staring at me. Go about your business, Flint. So anyway, oh, sorry. So anyway, they start doing this like war dance. Oh, I just love this picture. I'll come back to it. So anyway, they start doing this war dance. And like I said, I will definitely um, upload a couple of videos to show you hakas. Um, one of the videos that I show that will be uploaded here is like a, a native troop, like these guys who are doing a haka, um, just to kind of show you their culture. Another video is a very interesting one from Ulysses. Yeah, it's Ulysses Trinity in the Dallas area. It's a high school that for whatever reason has a whole bunch of Polynesian people, these kind of people, right? Um, Polynesian are like Moana, okay? Um, so anyway, a whole lot of Polynesian people live in this area and they go to Euless Trinity and Euless Trinity before their football games, like these are high school boys. They like do a haka and they're like, boom, boom. And then I'll show you another video. Um, it's a rugby video by the um, the rugby team, the All Blacks. They're, they wear all black. OK, 
okay, they're, I'm not being racist. They're called the All Blacks and they wear all black. And they also do a haka before their big um, like national games. I believe if I remember right, the video that I'll show you is them versus the French. And I love watching the French. They're kind of like, eh, right? But anyway, it's just really fun. And like the, 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 the two tribes would do a haka. Like one tribe would be beating their chest and like, ah, and like you doing this stuff. And then the other one would do it. And then boom, they would fight. And so to us over here in the West, we're like, oh, cute. They're dancing, but it's not a dance. It's a, I'm about to murder you war type dance. Okay. So it's just really cool. That being said, they're a warrior people. And a lot of them are slaughtered. And when I say slaughter, I mean slaughter. There are still Maori people today, but the numbers are nothing like the numbers that there are of native Aborigine. Um, a lot of the Maori were just slaughtered, absolutely slaughtered um, because they fought back so much. Yes, some Aborigine fought back too, but not near as much as the Maori. Um, eventually the, this is so weird, but eventually the New Zealand, okay, Eventually, the, the English convicts living in Australia who are now living in New Zealand, does that make sense? The New Zealanders from England actually send word to the English and they say, look, we know that we've escaped and we're, we're sorry, okay? But we need your help. These guys are killing us. And if you send the military to put these guys down, not only do you help us, but you also get a new part of your empire. That's so weird, y'all, they're convicts. But oddly enough, the English military will come. They will, like I said, um, slaughter a lot of the Maori and put the Maori down. And then um, some of those first like convict escapees from Australia are going to be some of the first guys that get to be in the New Zealand parliament. That's weird, but whatever. Um, and you see here, this picture, I love this picture so much. This is a Maori dude. Um, and you can see like all his extensive tattooing. Look at his earring. That's going through his ear. It's like an animal. Isn't that cool? But look at him. He's been very much so, I don't know, westernized. I mean, you can definitely still see like his culture here but then this is very British here, all right? This is a 20 minute video. I'm gonna stop this. No, I'm not. We're gonna go ahead and push through. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I can't. I'm gonna have to stop it. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Damn, I'm about to sneeze again. I'm going to go ahead and push through this. Okay. So just hang with me. No, I'm not. It's too much. I can't do all this in, in, in shorter enough time. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop. So I'm really sorry, but I got to keep these videos short. So I will see you later. Bye.